Super Mario Galaxy is a 3D platform game developed and published by Nintendo for the Wii. It was released in Worldwide in November 2007, and is the third 3D original platformer in the Super Mario series after Super Mario 64 and Super Mario Sunshine. The game follows the protagonist, Mario, on a quest to rescue Princess Peach and save the universe from the game's primary antagonist, Bowser. The levels in the game are galaxies filled with minor planets and worlds, while gameplay is updated with gravity effects and new power-ups. Super Mario Galaxy was first shown at E3 2006 and enjoyed a high level of pre-release awareness. The game was an overwhelming critical and commercial success. Having been hailed by several gaming websites as one of the best video games of all time, and has won a BAFTA, it is listed among the top-rated games and is the highest-ranked Wii title on review aggregator game Air rankings. The game is the eighth-best-selling Wii game worldwide with sales of 12.59 million as well as the best-selling 3D entry in the Super Mario series. The sequel, Super Mario Galaxy 2, was announced at E3 2009, and was first released in May 2010. Super Mario Galaxy was re-released as a Nintendo Selects title in 2011, and as a download via the Wii U eShop on May 31, 2015 in Japan and December 24, 2015 in North America. Gameplay Premise and setting, Super Mario Galaxy is set in outer space, where Mario travels from galaxy to galaxy in order to collect power stars, which are earned by completing levels in galaxies or defeating enemies. Each galaxy contains a number of planets and other space matter for the player to explore. The game uses a new physics system that allows for a unique feature. Each celestial object has its own gravitational force, allowing the player to completely circumnavigate rounded or irregular planetoids, walking sideways or upside down. The player can usually jump from one independent object and fall towards another one nearby. Though the main gameplay is in 3D, there are several areas in the game in which the player's movements are restricted to a two-dimensional plane, an element reminiscent of 2D Mario games. The game's main hub is the Comet Observatory, a spaceship which contains six themed domes that provide access to the 42 galaxies available in the game. Five of the domes end with a boss level in which the object is to defeat Bowser or Bowser Jr., which then allows the player to access the next dome. When the player first begins the game, access is available to only a few galaxies. However, as more power stars are collected, more galaxies become available to the player. When 120 power stars are collected, the player gains the ability to play through the game again as Mario's brother Luigi. Gameplay is slightly different while playing as Luigi, as some obstacles can be harder or easier to overcome due to Luigi's higher running speed and low attraction. Once 120 power stars are collected with both characters, the player is rewarded one additional challenge for Mario and Luigi to complete as well as two commemorative pictures that can be sent to the Wii message board upon each brother completing the challenge. Controls the player's character is controlled via the Wii remote and nunchuck. While most of Mario's abilities are taken directly from Super Mario 64, such as the long jump, wall jumps, and a variety of somersaults, Mario is given new moves that take advantage of the Wii Remote's pointer and motion sensing. The most basic feature is the Star Pointer, which appears on screen for the entire game and both marks the position of, and is controlled by, the Wii Remote. First and foremost, the Star Pointer is used to pick up special Compito-shaped objects called, Star Bits, which are then shot to stun enemies, manipulate obstacles, or feed hungry Lumas. Secondly, the pointer can latch onto small blue objects called pull stars that gradually pull Mario through space. Thirdly, if the player becomes encased in a floating bubble, the star pointer is used to blow air at it in order to influence the direction and speed it moves. 
At one point, the pointer can be used to clear snow. Luigi controls identically to Mario, but he has both better jumping abilities and less traction, making some areas either less or more challenging when playing through the game the second time. The player gains a new ability early in the game, known as the spin technique, which has previously appeared in varying forms since Super Mario World. In Super Mario Galaxy, the spin is primarily used for melee attacks, as it can stun enemies and shatter objects, and is used to trigger special propellers called Sling Stars, or Launch Stars, that launch Mario across large distances through space. The spin is also used for climbing vines, ice skating, unscrewing bolts, and for activating several power-ups. Other Wii Remote functions are available for smaller quests such as surfing aboard a manta ray or balancing atop a large ball and rolling it through an obstacle course. Power-ups and lives up until the release of its sequel, Super Mario Galaxy featured the most power-ups and transformations of any 3D Mario game. Nine power-ups supply Mario with a special costume that grants him new abilities. For example, special mushrooms bestow the player with a bee, boo, or spring suit. The bee suit allows Mario to temporarily hover through the air, climb special walls, and walk on clouds and flowers. The boo suit allows him to float through the air, as well as become transparent and move through certain obstacles. And the spring suit allows him to jump to high areas that would otherwise be inaccessible. The fire flower, which allows Mario to throw fireballs, makes its 3D debut. And the ice flower lets Mario create hexagonal tiles of ice to cover any liquid surface he walks on and allows him to skate across water and lava. The rainbow star grants Mario invincibility, allowing him to destroy any enemies that he touches, jump higher and run faster. The red star, which is an optional power-up only accessible after completing a certain mission, allows him to fly. Mario's health consists of a three-piece power meter, which is depleted by contact with enemies and hazards. When swimming underwater, Mario has an air supply meter, which quickly depletes his main power meter if it runs out. Mario's health can be restored by collecting coins and his air supply by touching bubbles or coins. When the power meter becomes empty, the player loses a life and must go back to a predetermined checkpoint. The power meter can be temporarily expanded to six units through the use of a life mushroom, with the maximum health returning to three units if the overall health falls to three units from enemy or hazard contact or if Mario suffers instant death. Instant death can occur by being swallowed by quicksand or dark matter, falling into bottomless pits which either consist of black holes or leaving a planet's gravitational pull and falling into space, getting crushed between objects, losing a race against a non-player character, or other special challenges. The player can obtain extra lives by collecting 1-up mushrooms, 50 coins without losing a life, or 50 star bits. Blue Hungry Lumas can also exchange 30 star bits for a 1-up mushroom or life mushroom in certain galaxies, usually before battling a boss. Multiplayer Super Mario Galaxy has a cooperative two-player option called Co-Star Mode, in which one player controls Mario and a star pointer while the other uses only the Wii Remote to control a second star pointer on screen to gather star bits and shoot them at enemies. Additionally, the second player can make Mario jump, or the height of Mario's jump can be increased if the first and second player press the A button at the same moment. The second player can also prevent some enemies from moving by aiming the pointer star at them and holding the A button. Story Shortly after Mario is invited to the Centennial Star Festival by Princess Peach to celebrate the comet that passes overhead, Bowser invades the Mushroom Kingdom with a surprise attack in a fleet of airships. Summoning a gigantic flying saucer, Peach's entire castle is removed from its foundations and is lifted into outer space. Mario is still at the castle's base until Kamek, one of Bowser's minions, launches Mario onto a small planet with his magic. 
On the planet, he meets an enchantress named Rosalina and her companions, the Lumas. Rosalina is a watcher of the stars, who uses the Comet Observatory to travel across the universe. However, Bowser has stolen all of the power stars that act as the observatory's power source, rendering it immobile, bestowed with the power to travel through space through one of the Lumas. Mario sets off on a journey across the universe to reclaim the power stars and restore power to Rosalina's observatory. Along the way, he finds friends from the Mushroom Kingdom like Luigi and Toads. Upon collecting enough power stars, the Comet Observatory regains the power to transform into a comet and flies to the center of the universe where Bowser is holding Peach captive. Confronting Bowser, Mario learns that Bowser's plan is to rule the entire universe with Peach at his side, using a newly constructed son of his own via the power of the Grand Stars. Mario manages to defeat Bowser and free Peach, however, in doing so, Bowser's son collapses into itself, becoming a supermassive black hole that begins consuming everything nearby. All of Rosalina's Lumas jump into the black hole to destroy it, but sacrifice themselves in the process. The black hole collapses into a singularity and explodes in a supernova. Rosalina appears to Mario as a giantess, stating that dying stars are later reborn as new stars. Mario awakens in the restored Mushroom Kingdom, full with all of the creatures he had met in the galaxies, alongside Peach and Bowser, celebrating the new galaxy that has emerged in the skies. Development the concept for Super Mario Galaxy's gameplay originated from ideas taken from Super Mario 128, a tech demo shown at Nintendo Space World in 2000 to exemplify the processing power of the Nintendo GameCube. The demo's director, Yoshiaki Koizumi, desired that one of the demo's distinguishing features, spherical-based platforms, would be used in a future game, but was held back in belief that such a feat would be impossible for technical reasons. Mario creator Shigeru Miyamoto suggested to work on the next large-scale Mario game after Nintendo EAD Tokyo finished development on Donkey Kong Jungle Beat in late 2004, pushing for the spherical platform concept to be realized. A prototype of the game's physics system took three months to build, where it was decided that the game's use of spherical platforms would best be suited to planetoids in an outer space environment. With the concept of gravity as a major feature, during development, the designers would often exchange ideas with Miyamoto from his office in Kyoto, where he would make suggestions to the game design. The game script was written by Takayuki Ikaku, though Koizumi was heavily involved in the creation of the story. The idea for Mario to have a spin attack came during the early stages of development when it was decided that jumping on enemies on a spherical map would be difficult for some players. Initially the spin was activated via rotation of the nunchuck's control stick, but after motion sensing was confirmed to be implemented in the Wii Remote, the spin was changed to be activated through shaking the controller. Koizumi suggested that Mario's life meter should have a maximum capacity of 3 instead of 8. But at the same time more 1-up mushrooms would be placed in the game and checkpoints would be added, in order to balance the game's difficulty. Satoru Iwata noted, the fact that the intensity factor changes according to whether the life meter is set to 3 or 8 is representative of the things that players do not notice that actually change the gameplay dramatically, it was first hinted by Takashi Tezuka, Nintendo's analysis and development's general manager, that multiplayer was going to be co-op in an interview with gaming site IGN. Two-player functionality was later confirmed, along with reports of the team experimenting with new ways to use the Wii Remote so that one player can control Mario while the other aids him. Backed up by suggestions by Miyamoto that the second player could have the ability to affect Mario's progress, 
It was later revealed at Nintendo's E3 2007 that the co-op mode was permanently implemented into the game and could be accessed at any time. In an after-hours press event at E3 2006 in May, Miyamoto stated, I don't want to promise anything yet, but if it's not a launch title it will definitely be there within the first six months. Nintendo of America's president Reggie Filsamy later stated in a November 27, 2006 interview with cable TV network MTV that the game was expected to be released sometime up to Christmas 2007. Near the end of Miyamoto's keynote presentation at the 2007 Game Developers Conference in March, he further confirmed. You'll be able to play Super Mario Galaxy this year. At Nintendo's E3 2007 conference, it was confirmed that Super Mario Galaxy would be released in North America on November 12, 2007, and it was revealed during Leipzig Games Convention in August that it would be released in Europe four days later. In North America, certain retailers had given out a free limited edition coin for pre-ordering the game. Some retailers had delayed it until November 13, 2007, such as GameStop in North America, and some retailers had delayed the release until November 14, 2007. Equally, certain UK retailers shipped the game a day earlier than the European release date. Music during development, Mahito Yokoat, who was in charge of the musical direction, originally wanted Super Mario Galaxy to have a Latin American style of music and even had 28 tracks in that style completed for the game. For Super Mario Galaxy's theme, Joko used Latin American instruments and a synthesizer to create science fiction sounds. The composition was approved by Yoshiaki Koizumi, the game's designer, but when he presented it to Koji Kondo, he told him that his composition was no good. According to Yokoat, he always had an image that Mario was for children, causing him to create cute music that would appeal to children. Three months later, Joko presented three different styles of music to Shigeru Miyamoto. One piece had an orchestral sound, one was a mix of orchestral music and pop music, and the last was pop music. Miyamoto chose the orchestral piece, which was written by Kondo. From then on, the game's soundtrack was composed for a 50-player symphony orchestra. Kondo composed four pieces for the game, while Yoko composed the rest. The composers asked the orchestra to play at different tempos in order to perfectly synchronize with the rest of Mario's movement. They also stated that even the sound effects fit into the musical score if the player listens carefully. The official soundtrack was released on January 24, 2008. It was initially an exclusive to Club Nintendo subscribers in Japan, although in November 2008, both versions of the soundtrack became available from the European Club Nintendo. The soundtrack was released in two versions. The original soundtrack, which only contains 28 tracks from the game, and the Platinum Edition, which contains an additional 53 tracks on a second disc for a grand total of 81 tracks. The soundtrack has won numerous critic awards, such as Best Design in Audio from the UK's Edge magazine. All music, composed by Mahito Yokoat, except where noted.